Okay, so we are on. <laughs> so, how's it going? Everything cool? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, zero knowledge. So I'm assuming people have heard about it. Um, but first, I'm gonna pre present myself. I'm I'm Zé Pedro. People call me Zé. Um, I used to be a music teacher. Then I kind of yeah, I stopped. Uh, I stopped teaching people to start teaching machines because they do what I tell them. But then, I mean, teaching is still more interesting because machines do what I tell them, and yeah, that doesn't work too well sometimes. Uh, now I'm just the real engineer at at, at Aztec Clubs, um, and so I work mostly with this kind of zero knowledge things, uh, and namely noir. So today. Uh, let's just go through our rundown. I'm gonna talk just a little bit about ZK, what what it is. I think that's not gonna be a surprise for anyone. Then I'm gonna talk about Noir and our specific uh, ZK DSL that we're building at Aztec. Then our build plan. Um, basically, I'm gonna demo something. Let's hope it works. And so I'm just gonna present what I what's gonna be happening. And then, yeah, then finally we're gonna try to hack something just very quick, uh, just to show how Noir works and uh, in the context of ZK. So we know that ZK proofs are powerful. Uh, they allow for ZK rollups, they allow for a bunch of privacy stuff that we care about. But again, with great power, uh, usually comes univari univariate polynomial commitments. So I'm I am personally I don't understand much of this. I try, but it's it's kind of hard. And the problem with ZK is exactly that: is that uh, you're, I mean, you're in a very very good position if you understand the math behind it. But if you don't, then you're gonna have some trouble. And so this is very important for us because, as you see, ZK works with. There is a lot of use cases for ZK from. Privacy, that's basically why we are here. Uh, from corporate, because you can basically prove that you know something without disclosing what. Uh, for gaming as well, because you can have a lot of on-chain gaming, off-chain gaming. Um, Compias identity, like we know with Sysmo, they were just talking just here. Uh, this morning it was very interesting, they were using ZK. And then we know a lot of, about blockchain. DeFi gaming, I put crypto twice. Uh, it's intentional because, yeah, crypto will, uh, crypto. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, we kind of try to have noir in these two places. So, in the intersection and in ZK, and that's going to be the Aztec L2 chain that uh, I can talk about it later, not today, not now. Okay, today, but not now. Uh, <laughs> about Aztec, what, what we're trying to do, and why do we need Noir for that? Um, so for that, we need a usable universal ZK DSL. We need something that people can write very easily, just like they write Solidity. That's kind of a tough job, right? Uh, just so that usually we talk about univariate polynomial commitments, and so how do we turn that into something that people can write just like they write Solidity? So we basically, we just, Copied Rust. We were like, okay, Rust is a nice language. Just, just copy. Kev likes co likes Rust, so Kev just decided to copy. <laughs> I'm kidding, but yeah, it's just like basically they are same. They are almost the same thing on the surface. Once you start scratching the surface, things get quite different. Um, so I'm gonna give you just a quick example. Um, just spot the difference between these two pieces of code. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think the 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 colors give it up. Uh, oh, okay, this, okay, reload. What happened? Yeah, okay. Well, this one doesn't doesn't want. No problem. Well, basically this one, uh, this one is Noir. This one is Rust. So they're the same, right? But again, it's just on the syntax level. It's just that because there are many things that are different between between uh, Rust and Noir, obviously. I mean, there is no concept of memory 
in in uh, in ZK, in yeah in ZK yes, but in in noir in general. So, but the syntax is the same, and that's that's the whole point. So we want to write code instead of writing circuits. So people that use ZK are used to write circuits. They go and sometimes draw the circuit on a piece of paper and then connect the wires, and then that's how they how they write. So if you are used to work, to work with Socrates or Circum, that's that's basically how how things usually go. So we want to write code instead of circuits, something that you can write as an usual language. Another slide I didn't want. Okay, no problem. So uh, what tools do we have for Noir? Right? What what kind of tools do we already have? Just keep in mind that we are in alpha, so we are zero point th something. So uh, it's still an alpha, an alpha stage software, so be careful. Um, <laughs> it's not production ready, it's not audited. Uh, and thing, weird things happen sometimes, so yeah. It's, uh, but uh, what's happening? Show anyway. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to load this. Okay, we have tests. Okay, I'm going to show you next what tests look like in, in Noir. Um, it's pretty easy. We have Solidity Verifier. That's very important because if you want to verify a proof on chain, then you need to have a verifier. We, we have them on Solidity because it kind of like the EVMs. But obviously, you can have it on every, every chain. And if you're interested in, in writing these verifiers on another, another chain, just talk to us, because we'll, we'll probably fund that. We have JSTS. This part doesn't work, so I'm lying here. OK? <laughs> I mean, it works with, with old versions of Noir. We're fixing that. Um, yeah, but that's, that's, uh, that's pretty cool, because you can basically run proofs on the browser, run proofs on the server. And this allows for a lot of use cases that are very, very interesting. One thing that, yeah, th we are proving backend agnostic. So basically, uh, this means that the language is what you're going to see, but it will compile to ASTR, which abstract uh, circuit intermediate representation. And so it means that it will compile to something that can be understood by many backends. And so this means that it's backend agnostic. It's because you can basically, you can plug in whatever backend you want. You, we usually plonk, we usually plug in plonk or turtle plonk, ultra plonk, honk, goblin plonk, whatever, all the proving schemes that Zach's, Zach invents. Uh, but for now, we are, we are on ultra plonk. But you can also use uh, GNARK, for example, which is another backend. You can use a Marlin, you can use Growth. As long as they understand ACR, you can use them and just plug in that and have your proofs being verified there. So, past that, let's uh, present our build plan. How, what, what exactly are we building here? Okay. So we're going to start by um, installing Noir up. So that's the part that didn't work. Okay, it's a bash script. So I'm, I'm glad you're not with your laptops because it's kind of a bad, yeah, it's a bash, bash script. It's basically, if you're used to Foundry app or Rust app, or uh, that's basically the same thing for Noir. You just install that Rust script, you run it, and you have Noir up installed. So then you can you can run Noir up, and you're gonna install the latest version, stable version of Noir. And so then you have Nargo version, and you can check that you have uh, whatever version you're looking for. And yeah, that's it. Uh, okay, another slide I didn't show. Our project is gonna be, we are gonna create a new Noir project. This one is easy. You just go and write Noir new, Nargo new, okay? That's gonna be easy. And then we're gonna make it interesting. So this command, this command doesn't exist, but yeah, it's gonna, unfortunately. Um, and then we're gonna write a test. I'm gonna show you how tests look like. So that's no problem that the other slide didn't work because I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, and then we're gonna if we have time, which I think we'll have, we'll try to also generate a solidity verifier and deploy it. Uh, sometimes it's kind of a it's a difficult task, so but we'll try anyway. If it breaks, please, yeah, just that's it. So let's hack. So uh, so here's my oh yeah link tree profile didn't show. That's one important. Yeah, you have the Noir starters here. Just talk to me. I'm gonna, um, I can show I can show you the starters, which is basically a repo you can clone and start building something. You also have the Noir docs, and you also have the Noir lang roadmap if you want to know where are we heading. Yeah, 
just yeah, just like him, just go and zoom in with whichever uh, QR code you were interested. So, so let's let's then uh, start with something. So I have here already something. Just in case something goes wrong, I can show you the whole project. Okay. Then uh, cheats. I'm I'm gonna show you. So I'm just gonna go not up. I installed not up already. So it's that bash script, but. I'm gonna show you just run more up and to install the nightly because I'm yeah because I'm crazy I, I want to use Nargo like latest version um, the nightly that's hopefully 0 0.6 okay that's cool so we can start I'm gonna just go and run Nargo new um, demo it's okay and it will start a new project here I'm gonna just cd into demo just gonna code something. Okay. Okay, that's something. So basic program doesn't do much. Basically, just checks that one field. You can f you can think of a field as a kind of an integer. Uh, for it's not the same, right? It's not 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 remotely the same, but you can treat it in the same way for most for most use cases. Um, it just asserts that one is different from the other one. So I want to make this slightly more interesting. I want to prove that I know the pre-image of a hash. This is one one of the most basic programs yeah, that you can write. So I'm gonna first import the library for the hash. So I'm gonna use dependency uh, std, and this is pull load my standard library, the Noir standard library. So I'm gonna just rename this for business uh, pre-image. I'm gonna make this an array of uints, uh, just three, I think, yeah. Uh, Can you your font size? Yes, sorry, yeah. OK, is it better? better. Yeah, OK. Thank, thank, you for, thank you for letting me know. And so here is the pre-image. I'm going to just say hash. So this hash is something that's publicly known. So it could be, could be kept, for example, on a, on a smart contract, something that everyone knows. You just want to prove that you know the image, the pre-image, uh, but everyone knows what the hash is. And so I'm going to just, this is going to be, it's going to be a SHA-256. I mean, there are many others. That's not a good, that's not a good uh, hashing, <laughs> a good hash for ZK, but you should use like Poseidon or Peterson or something. But yeah, I'm just going to use that one. Uh, and so now I'm just going to go and say the hash. Uh, nice try. That's not. That's not it. Uh, yeah. Yet. Yeah. Okay. 156 pre-image. Okay. Um, oh, cool. So uh, Copilot already knows pretty much what what it is. And so yeah, this is it. This is our circuit. Pretty, pretty simple so far. Uh, it's gonna be like that. So basically, what I want, I just I just calculate a hash. I just calculate the SHA of that pre-image, and then I just assert, and I want to prove that I know that the pre-image, that the SHA of my pre-image is going to be equal to the SHA, to the hash everyone knows. So I'm going to just just test this. Now, I need the wins for the pre-image and for the hash. That's why I had the cheats here. Uh, no, in the other. OK, here. Uh, OK, here is it. Just gonna pass paste this here. So trust me, trust me, bro. Uh, this is the this is the hash of four two zero. Uh, yeah, trust me, it is. Um, so now I just go and yeah, Copilot already knows what I want to do. So this hopefully this will give us a correct answer. So let's just head out over to my terminal. I'm gonna go and go and go test. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm in the wrong directory. Demo. Now we go test, and it says all tests passed. That's cool. Uh, I mean, if I change something, I'm just gonna make this a five. Uh, it hopefully will fail. Yeah, okay, it failed. So that's it. That's it for test. But now I don't have. I know that the syntax is okay, but I don't don't really have a proof. I haven't run a proof, so I'm gonna prove that. First, I need to build a constraint system. That's very easy. I just go and go now go check. And then I have the constraint system. You see, I have the verifier, the prover, and the verifier. The prover is what I want to prove. Stuff I know, stuff everyone knows. 
verify just stuff everyone knows, but I don't want to reveal to you. So I'm going to go into my prover. I'm going to just literally pick this, paste it here. Uh, yeah, this is double file, so I have to clean it up a little bit. Here I have it. Cool. So I'm ready, right? I have the prover. I have the circuit. So I'm going to go and Argo prove. I'm just going to give it the name of P. You can call it whatever. People just use P because it then will spit out the proof as P.proof. So yeah, it takes a while because again, SHA-256 is not the best, the best one. You should use another one. Um, you can have all, you can just go to the Nargo docs. You have uh, all the existing SHA, uh, the hash we have. We have Pedersen, we have Ketchak, we have um, Poseidon, we have, I mean, we have a hundred bunch of them. MIMC, whatever, whatever we want. We, if we don't have, we want, we want to have, and so we'll probably uh, find someone that wants to 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 build these kind of primitives. Um, let's wait a little bit. Yeah, that's it. That's just just we're waiting moment. <laughs> okay, so we have. So you see, our proof is here. Yeah, it's not very human readable, but yeah, it's a proof. So I'm going to run this little command. This little command basically generates our Solidity verifier. So it will literally spit out a Solidity contract for us. So while it's still doing that, I'm going to create an Anvil network. So Anvil, so yeah, so I don't have to use a testnet. Could could take a while. So I just create an Anvil network just running on my machine. Like could be hard hat node, whatever. Uh, I just like Forge, uh, like Foundry, so yeah. I'm using Anvil. Um, yeah, and this and this smart contract, it's already, it's a nice contract. You see, you can have like, it's very difficult to understand, but you can see this is a library and then basically you have here a contract here. So I'm just copy this and I'm going to Remix. Okay, Remix. Remix IDE. So I guess you probably have used this. It's a pretty old tool. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to start a new project. Um, def no, not default. New workspace. I'm going to just a blank workspace. I'm going to create a contract. I'm going to give it the same name. Plonk VK. I mean, it's ultra Plonk already. It's not. You see, it's ultra verifier. So Plonk is, is like two generations before. Um, so we have here, it will say it just complained that I was trying to copy paste something which is a security risk, and it is. So in this case, it's no problem. So I'm going to compile it. It will say, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry again. Yeah, can you see it? It's uh, one more. Like it? OK, <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> So it complains about stack too deep. So those of you who work with bytecode, you know that this happens. So I'm gonna just use uh, like a specific AVM version, and I think five five thousand runs of optimization should work. Okay, it worked. So here I have contract. You see, it's already built. Uh, the constraints, it's already there. So I'm gonna just plug in my Foundry provider, which is basically my Anvil network that I have. Is it? It has a bunch of money in there, so I'm gonna go and deploy my ultra verifier. It's deployed, and so here is it. Now I'm gonna just paste my pick my proof. My proof is here, here. Okay. Because I just add a zero x before, so it knows it's a uh, it's um hexadecimal, and then I'm just gonna pick. Literally, my verifier stuff that everyone knows. This is just basically the byte, the bytes padded for 32 bytes because that's that's how that's how Solidity likes it. And yeah, it's going to be very very anticlimactic, but it's just going to say true. Uh, just say yeah, proof. That's the proof is <laughs> is verified. If I change something, it's going to enter some kind of loop. I guess if it's just yeah, it says out of gas. It just enters some go some loop. It doesn't work. And, and that's it. I mean, we can, you can obviously verify that off-chain uh, and don't have to use it on our chain. And we don't care about 
how much how where where do you use it as long as it's it's uh it's uh it's verified somewhere and and that's it i think we have some time for questions right i hope if you have any questions oh sorry okay okay cool well then that's it i mean yeah just um just hit me if you need anything if you need to know something cool thank you